director of the CDC Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases. Uh, she comes out of the uh, CDC Epidemiologic Epidemic Intelligence Service. Um, has worked on many guidance that she's been working on the U.S. Great. Thank you. Um, and thanks for the kind introduction. Um, for those of you who don't recognize this picture, this is taken outside the postal facility in Washington, D.C. in 2001 in the fall in the course of the anthrax outbreak. And I put this up there because I think it's a good place to ground us. And so during that anthrax attack, um, we recommended about 100, about 10,000 people get antibiotics and then get anthrax vaccine, which at the time was in the media as being something that the military DOD recommended actually required. And there was a whole big hoopla about military um, staff um, um, being relieved of duty because they wouldn't get the vaccine. And so into that, we recommended that all these people get vaccinated. And I think the lessons are really emblematic of this conversation today because it ties together the need for pandemics as well as sort of the confidence and what we would see if we actually really did have a big outbreak. And the point I wanted to make is that we recommended this um, intervention for lots of people. And CDC has a high trust factor among the American people. But the people who were most willing to take the antibiotics and vaccine were those who were on Capitol Hill under the umbrella of the Capitol Hill physician who they knew and trusted and who gave them clear, unambiguous, straightforward advice, take your antibiotics and get vaccinated. In contrast, the postal workers had a different relationship with their management and with the federal government. And because they didn't trust us, it was really much more difficult to get them to accept the risk, to get them to take antibiotics, and even more so to get them to take vaccines. And those lessons from the BT event of 2001, I think really resonate when you think about rumors and how to get trust when, to get people vaccinated. Um, you know, if you listen to the cacophony of voices out there and the echo chamber of social media, you would think that there is a huge problem in the United States with um, people trusting their physicians and taking advice about vaccines. And yet, in every age group, kids, adolescents, adults, the elderly, if you ask people in the U.S. who they trust to help them make healthcare decisions about getting vaccinated, they say, my healthcare provider. It's not even close, right? Now, I think it's definitely different in other countries. This is probably more true in industrialized countries than it is in developing countries. But the point is sometimes if you listen, no offense to the media, not the good media, or the social media, you sort of get the idea that it's a social norm to not get vaccinated when in fact, People are listening to their physicians. They still trust their doctors to give them health care advice. And I would say that even in other countries and other contexts, there is some infrastructure of who people trust to help them make health care decisions. We are enjoying in the US a tremendous um, impact of vaccines, and it's because of routine childhood immunization. This is um, just the data of our childhood immunization vaccine coverage, and you can see that for most of these vaccines, we have 90, 95% coverage. That means that we enjoy a tremendous cushion of protection. That means that despite all of the rumors around the United States, most parents go on to get advice from their physician and get their kids vaccinated. Less than 1% of the kids in the United States actually aren't getting any vaccines. That means that by far the social norm is to get vaccinated. That being said, I would agree with Heidi that inside that number hides a lot of more detailed data. And if you talk to a local or state health department, they can all tell you of communities where um, kids are not getting vaccinated. The problem is that it's not a national solution in the US, nor is it a global solution. In each of those communities, there are different drivers. There are very different reasons why Somalis in Minnesota didn't get vaccinated compared to families that visited Disney. And in order to solve those problems, you actually really need to know the details of the community to have sort of appropriate messages for them. I would also say that um, we released data 
today that last year there were 80,000 deaths of influenza in the United States. 180 of those deaths were in children, and um, most of those kids were unvaccinated. So I do believe that every one of those deaths is preventable, and every one of those deaths is a tragedy. But the way that we're going to solve this, unfortunately, is not really by large um, national messages. It is, I think, by understanding the communities and people close to the communities and who the trusted people are who can bring those messages and give people correct information about vaccines and the risk of diseases so they can make appropriate choices for themselves and their families. Thank you.